Hi Push Your Wellness, I'm Poppy Jamie. I'm the best-selling author of the book, Happy Not Perfect. I'm an entrepreneur, happiness researcher, host of the Not Perfect podcast, and psychosynthesis practitioner. I spent the last 10 years looking into what makes people feel happier. And I've been writing for Push since the day this started. So this is a huge honor to be here today to take you guys through my flexible thinking happiness workout. And it's something you can do daily to ensure a happier future you. Okay, so before we begin, I want you to take your pen and paper and write down what would a future happy me feel like and look like? What are you doing? Where are you? How does it feel? Often, when we think about the future, we immediately move into vision boards. But the real secret behind creating our happiest future lies within the power of the present. How you manage the present moment and how you make decisions and how you respond to life right now is the true indicator of how your future is going to look. The past may form the present, but our past does not have to dictate our future if we are willing to take control of the present. And the flexible thinking method is a great set of tools to help you do that. So let's dive in. The first C of the flexible thinking method is connection. Just at the moment that you want to react to life, you want to send that email or say that thing or think that horrible thought that's only gonna keep you in that low, locked and low self-esteem, I want you to connect to your body. The power of a pause is your greatest friend when navigating anything in life. Our brains are wired for survival. And so that means our instinct wants us to react in any moment. It wants to react with stress. It wants to send that message. It wants to send that email. It wants to send that thing. Or it wants us to freeze or it wants us to flee because our brain thinks it's doing a great job by keeping us safe. But when we're stuck reacting, it means we are stuck in emotion and then we are stuck in the past. The past has created our present, but it does not need to create our future if we're willing to be flexible. So in any moment where you want to react, please now just think I'm going to pause and connect. And here's a couple of tips to do that. First of all, I want you to do these micro flexes, which is relax my shoulder and unclench my jaw. And now I invite you to take a big deep belly breath so inhaling into the belly, like a pregnant belly, and now exhale. Inhaling into the belly, and now exhale. Continue breathing like that, and I'm going to tell you about a new breath technique you may not know about, because the belly breath more people are familiar with. I'm now gonna invite you to do two Inhale through your nose, and then exhale through your mouth. So let's do that together. Inhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, inhale, exhale. <sighs> let's do that again. Inhale, inhale, exhale. <sighs> Continue doing that for me. Inhaling, inhale, and exhale, exhaling. And I'm gonna tell you about why that's helpful. When we inhale through our nose, we actually create nitric oxide, which is doubly relaxing for our system. And also you may be familiar with this breath because often we do a similar breath after we've been crying <sighs> because it's incredibly calming for the mind and body. And I hope you're feeling the slight shift because through the breath, we activate the parasympathetic nervous system, what I like to call the chilled radio station, and we start to relax that stress radio station that was playing when we wanted to react, we wanted to react to the threat. Immediately, we are reconnecting with the body. The next tip um, I want to give you about connecting to yourself is dancing. Now, I like to do this every single morning when I wake up because it doesn't matter how I've slept, I can often kind of feel a bit groggy and we can very often bring the stress from yesterday into today because we haven't shaken it off. So 
I'm gonna play some music now and I'm gonna invite you to get up out of your seat, put your hands above your body and we're going to play a little music. And see, you don't need any skill for this. I'm not a dancer at all. I'm mostly like a chicken at every wedding I go to, but that's fine because I'm not doing this to look cool. I'm doing this to move my energy and connect to my body. So you kind of get the picture there. As you can tell, no skill needed, just moving your body. Now, that may look a bit silly. She danced for a couple of minutes, but I'm gonna tell you why it's so important. There was a Hawkins scale of consciousness. And this amazing man, um, Richard Hawkins, looked at how our emotions also emit a frequency. So when we are stuck in shame or blame or guilt, we are very low energy. And the only thing that can help us change our energy is moving our body. So whenever you're feeling triggered or stressed, move your body before you even come to think about a possible solutions or your way out. My last tip for the connection step is to use a simple diffusion technique. And this is something as simple as just labeling how you feel by saying, today my mind feels, and have a think about what that may be for you. And please repeat that to yourself right now. Repeat what I've just said. Today my mind feels, and then insert how you may be feeling. The reason why that is so important is because it helps us to separate us from our emotions. It is so easy for us to be lost in an emotional identity. In so many of my coaching clients, like, well, I'm an anxious person. And I have to stop them and say, no one is any one emotion. We experience emotions. And a study at UCLA found that when we label an emotion, it actually reduce the emotion's impact on, on the brain such simple techniques, such profound impacts. So let's move on to the second step, curiosity. Stiff thinkers are people who are stuck reacting to life. They are stuck with their assumptions. They cling to their beliefs. They jump to conclusions and they're not willing to change. And because of the confirmation bias structure of our brain, our brain will always look out for the things we think are relevant. So if you believe you are not enough, your brain if it is not challenged, we'll always look for all the evidence to confirm that you are also not enough. And this is why curiosity is the greatest weapon in disarming historical stiff beliefs. Stiff beliefs are the beliefs that we absorbed in our childhood through no fault of our own, but we may not be responsible for them, but we are responsible for how we manage our mind today and how we rewire our confirmation bias. And curiosity is a great way of doing that. So before you, I know what she meant by this, or this means that when something happens that you don't like, try swapping that for, hmm, interesting. I'm gonna wait for more information. So staying curious allows us to stay in the power of the pause. Now, my curious mentor is the wonderful Byron Katie, and she has four questions to help you get really curious. Have a think about something in your life that maybe is kind of triggering you, it's annoying you, and now ask yourself, is this true? So is this true that everyone watching this is gonna think I'm hopeless? And my you know, self-critical brain would say, yes, of course, Poppy. And then I'd ask myself, can I be 100% sure everyone watching this is gonna think I'm hopeless? Well, I can't be 100% sure. How does these thoughts make me feel? Well, like, like a loser, like really unconfident, low energy, who would I be without these thoughts? Ask yourself that. Who would you be without the thoughts you're holding? Well, I wouldn't be insecure. I'd be feeling good. I'd be feeling confident. And what we realize is the root of our suffering is usually within our thoughts. We're not even 100% sure are true. Step three is choice. Now, look, we often don't have the choice to be happy because sometimes life really can throw a spanner in the works. And, and in those moments, you do have a choice to be kind. And a great trick to be kind is this question. So get your pen and paper, and I want you to ask yourself, what would I advise a friend experiencing what I am now in my life? 
And this could be anything. You could choose work, relationship, friends, family. The reason this question is so powerful is because it taps in to the wise part of your brain. When we are problem solving for other people, our, the computer side of our brain, the prefrontal cortex is activated. The emotional part of the brain is activated when we're going, what should I do, what should I do? Because it's connected to our survival. So when you flip the question and say, well, what would I advise a friend experiencing what I am now? You're no longer just stuck within your emotions. You start to calm that emotional center down by activating the problem solving part of the brain. Use your own wisdom to solve your own problems. And it's amazing how little we do that. And it's amazing how much more happiness we can experience when we do. The fourth step is commitment. And this is such an important step because it's all very well doing these, you know, mind flexibility exercises. But if we do not commit to acting aligned with how we want our future to be, we will never get there. When we are able to pause, to connect to our wisdom compassionately, that allows us to act, make decisions that will take us to a different destination. So how can you make sure that you commit to action aligned where you want to go? So think about that happiest version of you in the future and have a think about the values that that happiest version of you has. Think about those values that are associated with that happy place. The reason it's so important to commit to our values is because that is what drives our decision-making. An experiment was done that found in 0.3 of a second, we feel, and then that is what usually drives us to react. But when we pause, and able to connect to ourselves, to our most compassionate selves, and then to our values and to our wisdom, we start to make very different decisions. And so that list of values that, that you have written, I want you to write down in a very special place, maybe keep it on your the home screen of your phone, because whenever you then get presented with an opportunity, you could just look at your values and say, hmm, does this align? And suddenly you're able to make decision over and over and over again. And that is the power of manifesting. Manifesting happens in the present when you make decisions based on where you want to go, based on the values of what would take you there. And when you build a life upon values, it doesn't matter really what happens. It doesn't matter if reality and expectations go completely in different directions because in the present you have become so aligned with your values, your truth. And that is really the core of our happiness when we feel in alignment. And so lastly, on the flexible thinking method, it's to celebrate every time you pause. When we are trying to create new thinking habits that are going to take us to new places full of so much future happiness, we've got to celebrate ourselves because the only, we're like children. The only way we'll remember to do something again is if we, give, if we give ourselves a massive treat, a massive high five, a massive pat on the back every time we respond to life in the way that we want to. That is enough from me. I really hope you've enjoyed this happiness workout and I hope you found um, you know, some value in it. I promise you so much happiness awaits in your future and it's all possible because you have the power to take control of your present. Thank you so much and thank you so much, Poosh. I love you all.